impact of COVID-19 on supply chain risk management and resiliency. To discuss that topic, I'm joined by Bill DiMartino. He is Managing Director for the Americas with Risk Methods. Hi, Bill. How are you doing today? Happy to be with you. Thanks. So uh, what are some of the lessons from COVID-19 that we've learned from a risk perspective so far this year? Yeah, so what I believe is probably the number one lesson is that those that were best prepared were those that fared the best in terms of their ability to deal with the evolving and sometimes compounding threats that they had with COVID. So preparedness really means not only knowing and identifying all the critical nodes in your supply chain, but understanding how they're connected and actively monitoring them in the regions they operate in so that you're able to stay on top of, of emerging threats. So that's, I think, the number one agenda for folks. Although even those companies that were to some degree prepared for this could not possibly have been prepared, or I would think not have been prepared for a disruption that would affect the entire world, as opposed to regional disruptions, such as we've seen with previous ty uh, types of in incidents. So were there indeed some companies that, were, that saw that big picture, were far seeing enough to prepare for something of this scale? So I don't know that they prepared for the exact scenario. But what they did is they put in place the process and the procedures and, and the insights to allow them to, to react better. So as an example, if you understand how the, the pandemic was unfolding and maybe you quickly learned a lesson in China, maybe you applied those lessons very quickly to your Northern European operations. As an example, typically there would have been a set of announcements in a region before the shutdowns occurred. So if you're able to track the spread actively and predict the shutdowns probably going to happen in this region two days, three days a week out, you're able to lock in the supply and move it out of there before the logistics and transports were shut down. So while no one was, I think, prepared for this unique circumstances where even if it wasn't, uh, even though it was a, wasn't a regional event, it was also many events that compounded on each other. So I don't think anyone really had that the 100% uh, plan in place, if you'd say that. I see. We must also have seen some shifting of priorities of companies' customers as a result of this. And how are these companies that had these risk management policies in place responding to that? Well, if I understand your question correctly, I think what we're seeing a lot of is that customers are being more demanding of their suppliers and they're demanding a better level of transparency um, and asking them exactly how they're prepared and what their dependencies are so that they themselves can get, get a more um, picture, more complete uh, understanding of what their exposure is. So that's probably one of the biggest changes that we're seeing at the customer supplier relationship. And that's internally having a knockdown effect in terms of how those supply management organizations inside of those enterprises are treating and, and uh, collaborating with their suppliers. With this particular situation in mind, what kind of enhancements do you think to risk management programs are required at this point, even the good ones? How, how can they be further enhanced? Yeah, I mean, I think so. some of the fundamental enhancements are, are really some of the basics, right, which is just the internal collaboration and having stakeholders united. So I think one of the most effective forms of response that we saw was this war room concept, right, where you bring people together, they're aligned on a common focus, and they're able to operate and knock down barriers quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we don't need a war room in order to be able to do that. Maybe we can align on those topics and have better organizational unity ahead of crisis. So I think that's, that's an important um, capability to add. And when I get to the technology side, I think folks are really realizing that they've got to have risk awareness that is as close to real time as, it, as, it, uh, as the world is around them today. So no longer is it good enough to ask for a survey once a year. We've got to track them, monitor them, be on top of them at all times. Well, we've seen war rooms before. Uh, we've seen them in response to tsunamis, earthquakes, floods, volcanoes. I don't know about volcanoes, whether that caused a war room or not. But generally, uh, some companies have deployed them. So that's not particularly a new thing. Any new, uh, new wrinkles on that concept? Or is it just a question that we need to expand that idea out to more companies? Well, in this case, I think it was the longevity of the war room, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the, the crisis started. And I can remember having conversations with my customers where, it wasn't a, you know, wasn't a, we've got a hurricane, we're going to prepare for a week and to respond to a week and be done. They were working long hours in these, 
you know, collaborative teams for, for, for months at a time. So uh, maybe it's more like a World War II uh, war room where it's kept going and going and going. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think the lessons that, that need to be learned from that is that this is a way of operating and thinking that we can structure and make a more, uh, a, a more consistent part of our processes. One of the things we're hearing is that greater awareness of the need for a risk management program is leading to this idea of supplier diversification. The companies are trying to mitigate the risk of supplier failure by spreading the business around, so to speak. Do you see that happening? Is that uh, a feasible thing to be doing right now? Yes, uh, we do see it happening. More and more folks are talking to us about how can I bring risk into my sourcing processes? How can I understand what the inherent uh, uh, relationship brings to my category risk posture and what it means for me going forward? So we absolutely see that as an important thing. And, and it's really interesting because it puts an emphasis on this idea of not your supply chain is not growing less complicated. It's actually growing in size, which means that you have more suppliers to manage and ultimately more threats that are out there. So it just it once again puts the emphasis and the point on having a stronger ability to sense, monitor and track uh, what's going on because mm -hmm. they're going to be um, coming from all angles in the future. And I would imagine that there are situations where single sourcing is just necessary. There just isn't any other supplier that can make a particular cr critical part uh, for, for something. Uh, so if that's the case, I guess, what do you do then in your risk management program? How do you assess the risk of that? And how do you deal with it when things, when things shut down? Yeah, so I, th I think the risk program gives you the, the, the ability to understand the level and nature of that exposure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the reality is there's always approaches that can be taken to get rid of single source. They may be uh, too costly though, right? So that's a business decision. What is our risk appetite? But once you've determined that you're going to stay and maintain that relationship, honestly, I think, I think the best medicine for that is really strong collaboration. And that's one of the themes that I think we're seeing now is this idea of, well, I used to have strategic suppliers. I'm gonna work closely with them. That, that, that was true, but I think we need to work closely with more suppliers, with more, auto, more automation and more open dialogue and transparency. We've talked about companies that were ahead of the game or on their game with regard to risk management when this particular thing struck. There are, of course, many companies that are behind the curve when it comes to adopting any kind of coherent risk management program. For those companies, what is your advice? How do you even get started with a really good, strong, robust risk management program? Yeah, and I think this is a really common theme that, that we're seeing, which is we feel the push from everyone around us, our board, our executives, to get going and move. And how do I get going and move? And we usually uh, recommend to, to individuals that the way to get started is to get the organization an understanding by establishing a source of truth. And that is a measurable, quantified risk profile for all of the key suppliers and once you have that, you can then begin to align on priorities and make the investments you need it to, to change that, that, that risk um, structure and the, and the posture ultimately. Ah, the great source of truth, which has been a real bugaboo all this time. That just re that requires supplier collaboration up front on even when risk isn't an issue, just you know, in terms of demand and supply. So if, if a company, that, I would think that would be like topic A on any company's uh, list of agenda of things to do. Yo, you, know, you need to define exactly how you're going to the weight and score this topic. So what exactly are the risks that are important to you mm -hmm. um, and how impactful are they? And, and get that information so that you can really um, you know, roll up your sleeves and, and start to make progress. Yeah. What do you think should be, or who do you think should be the person within an organization to oversee the risk management procedure internally? Who should be tasked with that? Yeah, so what, what we are seeing in, in, for a lot of our, our larger uh, corporate customers, within the supply chain team, there's usually some kind of a supplier management procurement function. Mm -hmm. And those folks have, I think, a lot of the experience in the discipline of working across stakeholders, of working with the suppliers, of bringing together, you know, different points of view and uniting uh, individuals around those forces. So that's typically that center of excellence is usually built and held within, within those groups. So what do you think about this idea of a chief risk officer? You, we, we tend to see that more in the regulatory uh, driven uh, industries, oh, financial oh. services and, insu and insurance. Mm -hmm. And they you know, tend to really be focused on, I, I would, you know, the cyber risk and the data privacy risk and those topics. Mm -hmm. uh, when we get into more of a manufacturing setting, you know, the disruption 
tends to be much more prevalent than the, those other types more of compliance and hmm. uh, you know those those kinds of sustainability topics interesting so you so you kind of see procurement risk compliance risk cyber risk as being somewhat separate disciplines in a way right well, usually what we see is everyone's worried about all these same risks. It's just a question of which risks are a top priority for them and which yeah. ones are most impactful right now. So if you're a CRO, you're probably more focused on, on compliance and anti-bribery. And mm -hmm. if you're sitting inside a supply chain, you're probably most concerned about disruption in, in geopolitical uh, landscape. You're not, not concerned about those topics. They're just probably not number one and number two for you. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I want to talk about Risk methods at this point. Uh, tell me a little bit about the company. Um, what is your market niche? What was your idea when you were formed? And, and what do you present to, uh, to customers right now in these particularly perilous times? Yeah, so when, when we formed the, the company in 2013, really what we were really excited about was the ability to leverage um, technology, and specifically, in our case, artificial intelligence, to solve mm -hmm. the, the, the information challenge for companies. Um, so that, that basically meant there's this enormous amount of information out there. How can we sift through it using technology, artificial intelligence, to find the relevant insights and put those into the hands of the folks that need to make decisions? That mm -hmm. was really how we got the company launched. And after we started making inroads with that, we very quickly learned that the enterprises that we're working with not only had the challenge of visibility, but they didn't have a standardized, structured way of assessing the importance of, of the information they're receiving and having the plans and the, um, the ability to collaborate with suppliers to solve that. So we've really built out the solution to help organizations to really take control of that entire end-to-end -end process of identification, understanding criticality, mitigating the risk, and then moving the organization through being able to track and report on the impact of their successes, and in some cases, failures. Yeah. So you believe the maturity of AI is absolutely essential to the level of services and the, the product that you offer to the marketplace? Yeah, it's for, for us, it was sort of the defining capability of our solution. And we're always looking for new and interesting ways of applying artificial intelligence to the problem. As an example, um, understanding more what's going on in my sub tiers, um, potentially looking at common threads or patterns of, of information that lead to subsequent um, 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 outputs or events. So how can we really take this set of information that we've been amassing over the last seven, eight years and use it to help our customers to really get predictive and really help them to um, stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, well, it's great to see that technology has advanced to this point where it makes the type of thing you do possible. And yet at the same time, I'm sure you would agree that people are still a very essential part of the, uh, of the process in terms of proper risk management programs and, and, and the like. Uh, in any case, uh, Bill DiMartino of Risk Methods, I want to thank you so much for spending a little time with me here to talk about the whole risk management landscape, as well as something about risk uh, methods itself. Thanks very much for being with me. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me today.